Hi guys, welcome to another beer review and we've got a, a big boy today and a beer from a brewery that I've always wanted to try and um, you probably already can tell by the lack of videos but I really need to up my Belgian beer game, uh, game I should say. Um, I don't know, there's just... I don't really tend to gravitate to like the Trappist beers and uh, like the doubles, the triples, the quadruples and that sort of thing, like Belgian strong nails and all those things. Um, I don't know why, it's just, um, I don't really tend to, to go for that when I see them. Mainly because uh, a lot of them are so highly regarded and traditional that, you know, you're always going to be able to get hold of them, I suppose. But um, I was in Beretta fairly recently and I saw that they had stocked this, they had like a, a whole new stock of uh, Belgian stuff and this is actually uh, considerably cheaper than what I considered or what I think is the, like just the regular version um, or one of the regular beers from the brewery and I'm not sure if this is like uber special or anything like that but for the price I was like yeah um, it's good to get a beer like this ticked off the list so we're going over to the uh, Brewery van Steenberger. Apologies about the terrible mispronunciation there. And we are looking at the Golden Drac 9000 quadruple, which is clocking in at a hefty 10.5% in the fringe of 30ml bottle. Lovely design. Uh, it's got a, an actual wrapper on the bottle itself i'm not sure if there's i don't think there's anything on the actual glass underneath and there is an absolutely snazzy little crown so uh yeah very beautifully presented uh, very prestigious in its appearance and uh yeah this is a is this a quadruple yeah quadruple just said it's quadruple uh which it's a uh, strong belgian Amber Blonde Speciality Beer of High Fermentation with Secondary Fermentation. So yeah, a quadruple. Uh, a quad. I'm very unfamiliar with this style, it has to be said. So this is going to be an experience to say the least. And uh, yeah. Uh, ingredients are water, malted barley, hops, sugar and yeast. So let's give this one a go. Uh, this is definitely a beer to uh, end the night on. I'd say. Uh, and it's an active one. As he says, destroying the crown. Well, it's not as active as I thought it was. God, my, I just talk absolute bullshit, don't I? So, let's see what we get with this one then. Um, I think Jonathan over at Northern Summer the Beer Reviews reviewed this one fairly recently. Um, I, I've like added the video to the Watch Later playlist, but because I had the beer, I didn't want to watch it and spoil it for myself so let's see what we get here then let's go all that gunk in there so I don't have to worry about um, pouring only a little bit in because this glass is fantastic I can get my nose in there with a full pour in a fringe foam mill bottle of course so uh, yeah get on point Peter uh, lovely amber colour. That's like quintessential amber for me. Whatever fucking quintessential amber means. But yeah, lovely orangey, apple-y sort of tones in there. Slight woodiness. Uh, lovely amount of haze in there as well. Nice flowing carbonation going up to uh, just under two fingers worth of a slightly off-white foamy head, which seems to be standing its ground. And for... 10.5% I'm surprised that I actually created um, that much of a head but uh, now I'm looking at it at this angle you can see a lovely cascading amount of carbonation actually uh, it's not fierce but it's a little bit stronger than I first anticipated so yeah it looks really nice let's give it a sniff and I've got to say not really much is coming off this aroma um, 10.5% not getting that at all in the aroma, no boozy tones or anything like that. There's a like a, a nutty malty sweetness in there. 
has that slight bubblegum aroma to it as well. A little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of vanilla. There's like this slight damp, spicy tone. A little bit wheaty. Yeah, not much going on actually. It smells, uh, reminds me of like um, a wet banana bread dough. Anyway, let's give it a taste. Cheers, guys. Oh, that's smooth. 10.5%. I'm not getting that at all. I'm not even getting, like, at this point, a warming sensation. It's got this like, slight sugary water flavour, which sounds terrible, I know, because it's not sugary water by any stretch, but it's got this, like, like powdery caster sugar sort of sensation going on with it. Carbonation is nice and gentle. A little bit prickly on the tongue, but not too much. Yeah, I'm really surprised at how easy drinking and somewhat laid back this beer is. So, so smooth. It's like almost like rye bread flavours in there, like a rye bread crust. Or, or almost as if you've like glazed it with sugar syrup. Like this breadiness, but it's like like a sweet bread. Almost um, get this like brioche flavour from it. Nice upper medium mouthfeel to it. Not too heavy. Not too heavy on the gut as you're drinking it either. Very pleasurable, modest, laid-back experience, it has to be said. No flavours in there. You're punching you in the face or completely dominating. It's that balance that is just so nice and satisfying. It's such a subtle beer. And yeah, it's like got this like slight earthiness as well to it. Like a, a root vegetable sort of like aftertaste, but again not too overpowering and actually works in the context of that like bread dough. <laughs> it's like banana bread flavour. The more I'm talking, the more I'm getting like banana bread, banana bread, banana bread. Lovely vanilla tones in there, slight bubblegum flavour. Yeah, I'm very pleasantly surprised by this one. Um, I thought it would be a little bit too overpowering for my palate because I'm not used to this style of beer at all. But yeah, that's a really nice drop, that. Don't get me wrong, it's not blowing my mind. And it's not one of those beers where I'm like, whoa, I need to get another bottle of this anytime soon. It's one of those ones that you experience every now and then. If you want something a little bit decadent, a little bit luxurious. But I don't know, I just can't put my finger on what it is. Um, I don't get really overly excited about Belgian beers. I don't know what it is. Um, I've had some fantastic ones, I've had some okay ones. But there's just something about it that I can't put my finger on. Maybe I'd have to um, invest like a, a full discussion on this with some other people, but... Yeah, it's just this lovely sweetness that I like. You get this slight, almost um, like a nice glazed Danish pastry flavour to it as well. But you say that, and it's not overly sugary, sickly sweet. And it's that, you know, it's just amazing how a beer of 10.5% is masked and balanced as easy as, I mean, don't get me wrong though, you know, beers much higher than that. That probably do a really good job of masking the alcohol, but this, this would be like, to me, this tastes like a 6 or 7% ABV beer. It's absolutely insane. You could get yourself into a hell of a lot of trouble if you were doing a, like a little tasting event in a Belgian bar uh, with these beers. So, for the the Golden Drac 9000 quadruple. I'm going to give this one a very solid 8 out of 10. Probably with more experience of the style, I'll have to revisit it at some point to give a, a much more rounded opinion of it. But um, 
yeah, that's, you know, for like, I think less than two euros, that's a nice special little beer. And it's not gonna frighten away people who aren't used to these sorts of beers. It's a great, like, dipping your toe in the water sort of thing, I'd say. But yeah, nothing offensive about this. It's just, just really not my thing. Um, and I can't give you, like, a concise reason why. There's just something about Belgian beers that I just can't really warm to too much. I mean, Chimay Blue is a beautiful beer, don't get me wrong, but... Yeah, it's, um... Yeah, we're just watching DSDS and... German Schlager music. Can you just die, please? Uh, anyway, back on point. Fantastic beer. Give it a try if you haven't done so already. Uh, of course, if any of my friends have reviewed this beer, I'll put their reviews down below. Go check out Jonathan's review also. And, uh, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Check out the brewery. Check out my uh, Belgian beer playlist. And more importantly, I hope you'll join me next time for another beer review. And uh, thankfully, Schlager hasn't won yet. Uh, which is always a good thing, because fuck Schlager. It's shit music. Germany, you make shit music. You've got a shit pop scene. You've got great musical heritage. But it's just like your, your films. Your films are shit. All these shitty romantic comedies. Just sort out your culture. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I shall hopefully see you all later. Cheers!